Hello, uh, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is a commandment of Jesus. Uh, we're going through the 50 commandments of Jesus, and the 50 commandments of Jesus are found on a playlist. Uh, we've done like 35, uh, and uh, we're working our way through it, so uh, you can check out the other commandments on uh, the playlist. Uh, this is uh, the latest commandment, and... Uh, what happens is Tolu reads the title of the commandment. Uh, she reads uh, the scripture passage it comes from. Then she asks up to uh, 10 questions. And as a prophet, uh, Jesus speaks through me and answers the question. So we're pretty close uh, to the second coming because Jesus has spent time uh, teaching his 54 parables through me and uh now he's teaching his 50 commandments through me and uh must be getting close to uh him returning uh so i hand it over to to lou thank you Matthew, and welcome jesus the title of today's commandment is repent of your sins and i'm going to read two different bible passages the first one is mark chapter 1 verse 15 it says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Then we've got Luke 13, verse 3 to 5. It says, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the Torah in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I'll tell you no, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. So that's the two passages for the title of the commandment today, which is repent of your sins. The first question I've got is, what does it mean when you say the time is fulfilled? How does this relate to the urgency of repentance? Uh, so uh, there was uh, a timetable as when uh, the first appearance of the Messiah was to appear and uh, it was prophesied uh, in the prophets how he'd arrive and what he would done and uh, the time had uh, been fulfilled. Uh, he's saying that he is present now and uh, people need to uh, do what I say. Okay, thank you, Jesus. And how do repentance and belief in the gospel, how do they work together in transforming one's life? Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, a person has to uh, come to uh, the decision or come to the knowledge that they need to change, uh, that uh, they're, they're in need of a saviour and uh, repentance is uh, your way of uh, accepting that fact and uh, asking uh, for me to uh, be part of your life and uh, for you to put the whole life away uh, through the act of repentance. Okay, so in order to enter the kingdom of God, how is it connected together, the repentance itself? Uh, so... Uh, Part of uh, the process of uh, becoming a Christian uh, is uh, the uh, repentance side of it. Uh, of course, uh, uh, understanding the kingdom of God, uh, having the ability to see visions and uh, uh, visit heaven and have uh, supernatural encounters, that part of the supernatural uh, part of uh, being a part of the kingdom of God isn't evident uh, to many people. It doesn't manifest uh, to many people. But as far as uh, people qualifying uh, to go to heaven, repentance is one way uh, into that place. Thank you, Jesus. And the reading of the look, I think there was something about tr some tragic, tragic events that happened there. Why did you highlight repentance in re in response to the tragic events? Uh, I was uh, showing uh, the people that uh, his a judgment 
that happened in the past and I was asking them, uh, do they actually think that they're any better than those people uh, I was showing uh, people uh, that uh, were listening that tragic things can happen and uh, comparing that uh, to the end of their life uh, and uh, showing that uh, uh, even though tragedy happened to the other people, uh, they're not any uh, better than those people. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Uh, when I look at repentance with my re religious mindset, I used to remember we, we preach, you repent, unless you repent, you're going to perish. When we're talking about repent, what type of repentance are we talking about, Jesus? Is it like turning away from all your sins, what you've been doing, or repentance is more of a state of art? Uh, it's both. Uh, it's a lifestyle choice. So uh, I would uh, dearly love if people uh, turned uh, from their habitual sin, which can be hard for them, uh, but... Uh, I, uh, it's more, uh, the repentance talked about here is, uh, more of a change of allegiances, uh, whether you're going to, uh, follow your own decisions and your own flesh from now on, or you're going to, uh, crucify your flesh and, uh, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And so it's a transformation and a change of heart of who you, who are you going to swear allegiance to, uh, yourself and the devil or mm. myself? Mm. And why, do you, why did you emphasize repentance as a key to avoiding perishing? Uh, because uh, it's a doorway. It's the entrance uh, to a doorway. It's the entrance uh, to uh, uh, coming uh, into a uh, restorative uh, relationship uh, with me it's like one of the keys uh one of the ways you enter the doorway thank you jesus do you think we we christians are what question are this? you up to uh number five i think yeah number five matthew do you think we doing the right justice to this passage repentance is it the way that we preach it is that the way you emphasize that we should be reaching out to people where you go on the street and say you repent unless you repent if you don't repent you'll perish is it in that manner or it's more of a gent gentle way of just reaching out to people and telling them the importance of repenting and why they need to draw near to god uh it's a traditional way of Christians and a religious sort of a mindset of Christians. Matthew just uh, prophesied uh, to a Hindu woman and uh, God spoke uh, really lovingly to her and really accepting of her. And uh, she wrote back and said it was a beautiful message and she's going to keep this video. It was very precious to her. Thank you so much. And uh, Matthew didn't hear one word uh, from God, uh, speaking to this Hindu woman who believes in other God, Matthew didn't hear one inflection uh, from God that she needed to repent and she needed uh, to choose uh, Jesus as a saviour. Uh, she, uh, she seemed to be accepted and loved by God and didn't need to make any changes. So um, this is uh, in a book uh, written uh, mainly uh, to Christians and this is the way that Christians know, but I've got a, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, purposes and ways for people to make it to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And how can we understand the urgency of this message in light of your return? Uh, so uh, people uh, have to understand that... Uh, uh, in order to be doing the will of the Father, like it says in 1 John 2.17, uh, that uh, people will live forever who do the will of the Father. And uh, in 1 John, uh, uh, Matthew uh, 7, it says uh, uh, only those who do the will of the Father 
make it to heaven and uh jesus doesn't say i don't say depart from me i never knew you so part of uh, doing the will of the father is uh to understand my teachings and obey them uh there's many people uh sadly uh, who don't obey me and uh, don't participate in what i taught and uh, they don't end up in heaven well, thank you, Jesus. And how does the true repentance, how does it affect our daily walk with God according to these passages? Uh, one understanding of repentance that hypergrace people bring up uh, is uh, the word uh, repentance uh, in that context means have a change of heart. And uh, it's true that uh, uh, it uh, would be best uh, that... Uh, people have a change of heart and uh, come to realize that I'm the savior and uh, I'm the teacher and uh, they uh, should obey uh, what I teach and live their lives accordingly. And time is uh, running out and time is getting short. The best time to start to obey me is now. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Matthew number nine. And how can we recognize areas of our lives that require repentance in light of these verses? The Holy Spirit uh, will be used to convict you of uh, certain areas in your life and certain things that you're doing uh, that he doesn't approve of. He'll uh, put his finger on it. Uh, you'll think about those things or when you're doing those things, you'll uh, be convicted by the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's the time where you could uh, go to prayer and ask uh, the Holy Spirit uh, for his strength for you not to participate in the actual thing he's convicting you of. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And I wanted to understand how does these verses challenge the idea of self-righteousness or blaming others for their misfortunes? Uh, so uh, everyone uh, is uh, destined to, to run their own uh, course and participate uh, in their own life. Uh, and uh, sadly, some people who overcome uh, sin uh, and uh, habitual sin or a sin that had uh, them bound, sometimes they become so excited with the mm -hmm. fact that they've overcome the sin, that they become self-righteous and start preaching to other people and uh, boasting of uh, their righteousness, which isn't something that's uh, enlightening, it isn't something that's endearing uh, to other people. So it's important as you overcome uh, your sins and get on top of your sins, it's important for you to be humble and uh, share your testimony with grace and love. Thank you, Jesus. And my last question is, what are the consequences of ignoring the call to repent? Uh, so uh, in the traditional Christian sense uh, that uh, is uh, understood by the majority of Christians, uh, the majority of Christians would uh, believe that unless uh, you repented, uh, and uh, Christians don't really have a very good understanding of what that repentance entails, but uh, Christians believe unless uh, you say a sinner's prayer and uh, confess your sins and ask for forgiveness that you haven't repented. Uh, but uh, uh, repentance is more like uh, a change of mind and a change of allegiance, and uh, so you can say a sinner's prayer uh, and uh, believe that you're saved. But if uh, you don't go on and start to live your life in accordance to what I taught, it's not true repentance. Uh, so uh, it's important that uh, people not only know about me and believe in me, but uh, part of belief is an action word. Uh, if... Uh, uh, you uh, believe uh, in uh, driving a car from one place to another. Uh, part of that belief is using the steering wheel and the brakes and the accelerator. Uh, if uh, 
if uh, you don't uh, take action uh, to support your belief, it's not really belief. So um, it's important that uh, people change allegiances and start to live according to the way I taught, and that's true repentance. You, Jesus. That's my last question. Okay, so uh, if you listen to this, like, share, and uh, and uh, comment, and uh, have a wonderful day.